Hi everyone, I am back. I am doing a video today on a different kind of treat bag or box, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a backpack. I went in search on, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube and Google. Um, I'm on Pinterest, but I don't find a lot of stuff on Pinterest that I care for, so I don't go there to look for anything for myself, but I do um, I do upload to my boards. So I wanted to find a backpack as a treat bag um, type of thing for my sons for Valentine's Day this year. Last year I did the little uh, metal mailboxes and this year I wanted to do a backpack. So the only one I found that I liked is by a woman in the UK, um, Papercraft Button, I think is her YouTube channel, but I was really, really confused with her whole design. Um, one, the paper size is not the same as it is in the US, and I was really confused by that, and she never said what the size of the paper was. Their cardstock is A4. Um, I don't even know what the measurements of that are. So they're not the same. I got really, really frustrated and confused. So I said, you know what? I can figure this out myself. And I just pulled out a piece of copy paper and I made a backpack. So the inspiration came from her. Um, but all of these measurements and everything I did on my own. So it's the same look as her backpack, but I'm sure all the measurements are different. Um, so this, these are the first ones I made, um, and I used, this is real red cardstock, and I used, I'll show you some of the stuff I used, um, the Stacked with Love Designer Series paper that we have out. So there's a lot of really awesome black and white prints in here that are very good to use for boys. That's what I needed, was boy stuff. So... This is the, the style of my backpack. These are the little sides. I did a little brad and tie. My straps are made out of cardstock. I did not do ribbon. So there's the other side. And then um, my closure is Velcro. So then inside you can just put your little treats in there and it just Velcros shut. These you can actually untie and you can fit something pretty small in there. Um, to me, the little side pocket is more of a decorative feature. Um, but I'm sure there's something that you can stick inside of it. For the front, I used the Groovy Love stamp set. Looks like this. So I used this heart here, and I had to fussy cut this out. Um, because our sweetheart punch fits right inside of it to make like a frame out of it, not on the outside. And then I used from my heart. And then I used the um, the Framelit Spitty Banners dies to cut out um, the from my heart using the little wavy die. And a real red button up here. This is all stamped with real red. And then um, just some crochet thread. I love this stuff. So that, that's one of them. Um, here's another one. This one I used basic black twine. Um, same with this one. I used the basic black twine on that one. And then this one I just used the thread again. I, I tend to go for the crochet thread more because it's a little thinner than twine. And then it doesn't like... I don't know. This has these little things that stick up almost like yarn and I kind of don't like that. But this one I just, I made the base black and I used the red hearts print inside so all this is done in the black and I put heart brads on the sides of this one. This one is for obviously not a boy, <laughs> it's for a girl. Um, and then I took some real red ribbon and put that along my um, my cardstock for my little backpack handles there. So I'm going to make another one, a girly one. 
So my base is, I'm using real red cardstock again, and you can get the, the backpack and the straps from one eight and a half by 11. This whole measurement here, minus these little side pockets, this is four inches across and three and a quarter inches tall, and it's an inch and a half deep. So that's the finished dimensions on that. So you're gonna need a, two pieces of cardstock. Um, one, you're going to cut two pieces that are two inches by seven, and this is going to be your little side pockets. So two by seven. Um, your base piece, I'm going to cut that with you on camera because it's, I don't have an exact measurement actually for the straps. It's roughly three quarters of an inch, but I'll show you why it's not exact. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to take your 8.5 by 11 sheet, and you're going to keep your 11 inches, but you're going to cut your 8.5 down to 7. So 7 inches. Okay, so this is going to be the base of your backpack. Now you're left with this little strip that's roughly about an inch and a half by 11. So we're going to cut this down to 7. And then what I'm going to do, let's hopefully get this in the camera there, is this is about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to place it in between my three quarters on this side and my three quarters on this side because it's just a tad bit under. So I'm just going to line it up as best as I can and I'm just going to slice this piece right down the middle. Just like that. And that gives me my straps. So that's why I cut that one on, on camera for you guys. So it's basically just taking that little strip on the edge, cutting it in half, and making sure. If you want longer straps, that's fine, but I figure 7 inches is good enough for that. Okay, so now we're going to do some scoring. I don't knock everything over down here. Okay, so scoring on the 11 inch side, we're going to score at three and a quarter, four and three quarters, eight, and nine and a half. Okay, so then you're going to turn it, then you're going to score at one and a half, and five and a half. Okay, so there you've got all these score lines. Hoping the camera picks all those up for you. Okay, so now you're going to score your little pieces. On your seven inch side, you're going to score at two and a half, three, and then five and a half, and six. And then when you turn it, you're going to score at half and one and a half. And that's going to make your pocket. So on the other one, again, two and a half, three, five and a half, six, one half, and one and a half. Okay, so now to assemble the little boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and fold on my score lines. Okay. So your longer side, your two and a half inch side here, you're going to have two score marks. 
hoping you guys can see that. And you have a little square right here that's going to separate your two score marks there. So you just want to cut up to that first score mark and then this little piece is going to become your tab. So you just want to take a little notch out of there. Um, it's just basically building a box just a different kind of size. So you want to do this on both sides. So then you should have a piece that looks like that. Now you have your smaller score lines up here and what you're going to do is you're going to cut these little ends off right here. Just like that. And then you'll cut this side off. This just gives it a little fold over flap that's easier to access. So there we have that one. So let's go ahead and do the second one. these little notches out. And this section up here. You could leave this little flap on here so you have a little tab to tuck in if you want to. but I don't find it really necessary for this little tiny side pocket. Okay, so now we're gonna put the boxes together. You're gonna want score tape or red sticky tape, whichever one you use. but you're going to want something strong enough to hold these together. So on the inside of the box, you just want to put some score tape. Just on the inside. On these long panels right here. And that's it for that. Okay, so press it down. And then I go ahead and fold my tabs in, and then the bottom of the box is going to come in, and your sticky tape is going to go on the outside, obviously. So then you just take the liner off and press it down. So there is one of the little the little side pockets. So same with this one. Just take your little tabs and tuck those in. Bring your bottom up. Fold over the front. And I just I like putting it together like this, knowing that the box is gonna be straight, so it's kind of partially assembled. And then you just have to make sure that your bottom piece down here is lined up. And then you just fold over. Like that. I hope my hand's not in the way. And this one has a little hang over here. Oops. So, just kind of line it up. I'm trying to get it to where you can see. So the bottom is lined up there. And then just press down. And then there's the other little side pocket. So to finish off the sides, 
Um, I'm going to do another little tie. So I'm going to show you how to do those. And all I did was take a three quarter inch, or a five eighths, I'm sorry, a five eighths inch punch. And this is just a recollections one from Michaels. And I just punched out some white circles. And then I stuck a brad in the center. But if, as you can see, the brad sticks up a little. And you want that so you can tie your string around it. So I've tied this one on. And this is going to be the piece that will go on the top flap. So I'm just going to take a couple of glue dots and I'm going to put it on either side of the brad. This is so it'll stick to the box. <laughs> if it'll stick to my paper. There we go. Okay, so I just close up my box. You can decorate the front of your box if you want to. I've just kept them plain. And I just give it a good rub with my tweezers. Make sure that glue dot is going to stick. So there you have the top piece. And then the bottom piece, you'll do the same thing with a couple of glue dots or whatever you want to use to adhere this down with. I just have found that these glue dots are pretty tough and they tend to stick really well. So I just close it up and then just kind of eyeball um, where I want my bottom one. Oops. Again, just rub it down with your finger, bone folder, tweezers, whatever. Make sure that glue dot is stuck. And then you just take your string and wrap it however you like. And then trim it. So there we have a little side pocket. Now we're going to go ahead and do the second one. So this is kind of a going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, just so I can make sure I cover everything. So I'm just going to wrap this around my brad here. And just tie it. And then I wrap it around again and give it another tie. Just to make sure that my string is going to stay. And then all you do is just trim this little tail off. Whoops, see I'm dropping stuff. And then you just have your little piece there. So we'll go ahead and attach this. Just like we did the other one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so then again, you're going to do the bottom one just the same down here. Oh, I've got a screamer down there. So then we're just going to attach this one the same way we did the other one, just kind of lining it up like this. Just press down those glue dots so they hold. And then you can go ahead and tie your string 
and then trim it. So there we have the two side pockets. Okay, so once you have your little sides done, you can just set your little side pockets um, to the side, and then you're gonna do your backpack. So I like to attach my papers before I fold up my backpack, because it's flat and it's easier so for your designer paper, you're going to need two pieces that are 3 and 7 eighths by 1 and 3 eighths. And that is for your little front flap and your top piece. And then your base piece here is 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 1 eighth. So this one, there really is no directional pattern, so um, you can just attach it to your big panel and your two small panels. Um, the other ones that I did, I went ahead and cut my 3 and 7 eighths wide. Uh oh, I'm going to run out of tape. And then, um, like when I used this back piece, I cut my my two smaller pieces and then my larger piece so they would kind of um, line up as they were going down. So this is my panel on the bottom which is going to come up as the front of the backpack. So just put that on there and I'm going to have to get more tape. So. I am going to change my tape and I will be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and attach my two smaller pieces. trying to center that and then the next one okay so there we have the two smaller flaps and the larger flap and then you're just going to go ahead and fold on all of your score lines again. And then we'll do some more cutting. Okay. Here you're going to, this is going to be your, your bottom, so this is going to fold up like this, and this will be the base of your backpack. So you want to, on these two little squares here, you just want to notch out, these are going to be your little tabs that you'll fold in. So basically the same way that you did the, the little box, only you're doing it to this bigger one. And just take that little notch out. And that's just so it folds up a lot nicer. And you'll do that on both sides. Okay, now these top pieces, I'm not going to cut them the way I did for the smaller ones. So you've actually got two squares here and two squares here. You want to cut all the way on this first score line. You want to cut on the inside of this score line all the way down to your second score line. 
but you're just cutting down to it. You're not going to cut this flap off. I can get my scissors to go straight. So just like that. This first square, you will go ahead and take off. So you'll just snip that off and then just take a little notch out of this piece here. So that's going to be your tab for your top of your box. So you'll do the same on this side, just all the way down to that square line. You're going to remove the top square and then take just a little notch out. So this is what it should look like. You should have your two flaps on the bottom here. Then you should have a longer flap with your little tab still attached and then your top piece. So now we're going to put some score tape on the inside of these two longer panels here. And I'm going to put a piece on the outside and a piece on the inside near the score line, but not crossing over. On both panels, we're going to do that for. And that's it for the score tape. So just press that down so your tape sticks. Now I flip mine over and these two tabs here for the bottom, I just apply some ATG tape. And this just keeps it adhered to the side so that way when you're putting stuff inside the little box, it doesn't get caught on the little tabs that are just sitting inside. And before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the back before I forget while it's laying flat. I don't know how many times I have forgotten to do that. I'm just going to stamp that. So then what I like to do is adhere the back to my little tab here because your front piece is going to come over the front. So I just tuck that in so I can line this up with the bottom and just kind of press that down. So the same with this one. Take the back piece. Fold it over your little tab. Got some on the bottom. Don't want it on the bottom of the box. There we go. And just line that up. And then press it down so it'll stay. So there we have the back of the box, basically. And then what you'll do is take your front panel and lift it up, and then your sides will form around just like that. So, oops, I'm gonna turn around. While it's just kind of folded up, just remove your liner from your tape. And then just watch that the bottom is lined up and it's pressed down your sides. Flip it over and do the same on this side. If I can get these pieces to come off. Got that one. There we go. So just line it up and press down. So I like to just take my bone folder and go ahead on the inside and just rub it. So here's your little tabs that should fold in and then your front flap will 
fold over just like that. So now we are going to go ahead and do our straps for the back of the backpack before we do anything on the front of it. And these are fairly simple. You can use the cardstock pieces like I do, or you can use ribbon if you would like. If you're going to use ribbon, um, before you assemble your box, you're going to need to punch holes in the back for your ribbon. Um, so I just take my little strip. This is roughly three quarters of an inch by seven. And just kind of curl it with my bone folder so I can shape it better. And then I'm just going to take some score tape and I just put it right here on the edge. On both sides. So that way I can attach these. Like you saw in on the little black backpack that I did, I did put ribbon over the cardstock. So I thought that was pretty cute. So I did go ahead and curl my ribbon and then or my cardstock and then I just attached some ribbon with some score tape. This one I'm not going to do that with. So I'm just pressing these down. Now the placement for your straps is completely up to you. It's wherever you want them. I tend to do it about a quarter of an inch in from the side. Try to get it as straight as possible, but you know, eyeballing it doesn't always mean that it's straight. But this part doesn't have to be completely perfect. I mean, it is a handmade bad backpack. <laughs> and then I just shape my my straps the way that I like them. This one on. So I tend to just push up on the back and give it more of a curve towards the top. So when you're kind of looking at it, it, it kind of looks like backpack straps. So there's the back. Okay, now we're going to move on to putting the sides on. So you're just going to want to put some score tape or red liner tape or whatever it is, something strong on these little boxes. You don't want your little pockets to fall off. <laughs> And you could certainly make a little backpack that doesn't have side pockets. Um, you could do a different style of pocket. I mean, this is this is just the beginning of whatever you want to do to it. So it all depends on where you take it. Okay. So placement for these is pretty much up to you. I tend to not place them in the center. Um, I do more towards like a quarter of an inch on each side with the bottom. So I'm going to tilt it. And then just press it on there. So 
Same with this side. Just kind of quarter inch from the bottom and sides. And then press that on there. So I'm just going to take my bone folder and just give those a quick rub. Just make sure that they're going to stay. So there we have the majority of the backpack. We have the sides on and the straps. So now we're going to do the front. I have already pre-cut my little hearts here. I have a real red button that I just tied some thread onto. And I'm actually going to attach that with... Um, my closure is going to be another Velcro closure. And I find sticking something on the inside while you're trying to do the Velcro really, really helps. And I actually have... I grabbed this. It's just the... Uh, the ribbon that comes with the accessory pack when you when you order fifty dollars, it's one of the free celebration things. Um, it fits in here perfectly. So if you wanted to give ribbon as a gift, you totally could. You can fit three little rolls in there. But that gives this some some hardness inside there, so I can attach the Velcro easier. So that's all that is being used for. So these are just some already sticky Velcro strips that I just picked up at Walmart. And I'm just going to attach them together. And I'm going to go ahead and stick it on my lid. And I try to center it with my mat here as best as I can. Okay, so that's about centered, and then I just close it up, make sure that this is going to line up evenly, and then just give it a really good rub. That's why putting something inside really helps a lot. And then just undo your pieces, and just rub those down again. So there we have our Velcro attachments. Now you can use the little uh, basic gray um, magnets. You just would place it underneath your paper here. And then your, your top one, you could just punch out a little um, coordinating piece to cover up your magnet. Or you could stick it underneath the piece on the front and then you'd have a little magnetic closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this back up and place my button on the front. I'm just going to use some more glue dots. Put a couple on here. Make sure that it's going to stay. You can use hot glue. You could sew it to the front if you wanted to with the thread. Um, I'm just going to stick it on with glue dots. I haven't had any of the other ones come off. So, I kind of just put my, my finger on that Velcro and figure that that's probably about centered, that Velcro piece. Whoops. So there we have our little button. And then I've pre-cut and assembled my hearts. These are from, I'll show it to you again, the Groovy Love stamp set. And I, I cut the bigger heart out and then I used the Sweetheart Punch. Where did I put it? Right here. I used that for my little polka dot and stripe heart. And I have them on dimensionals and I'm just going to put those right there on the front. Just to dress it up since this is a little Valentine one. I'm going to go ahead and use <clears throat> excuse me, my tweezers for this so I can make sure that I get it where I want it. So just like that. So there you have 
a little backpack all done. So like I said, you you can take these as far as you want. You you can make them more extravagant. You can make them less extravagant. Um, here's a little Pacific Point one I've done. So you, I mean, really you can do anything you want with these. This is just, just the basics. So here's the little sides and the back. So that's it. That's how you make a little backpack treat box. Hope you guys like it, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.